Appamata and its programs are supported by your generosity and your generosity and support makes such a difference. You can find a link for contributions on the website at appamata.org. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I was sitting in the Zendo this morning and, and just enjoying being here. Uh, I think that this is the last Sunday that I will be able to be in the Appamata Zendo on 38th Street for a while. And because of that, I want to show a slideshow to share with you about um, just some just some views of the of the Zendo, some pictures I've taken over the years that mean a lot to me and that I've shared and at times that I've shared with other people or other times that I've been on my own here uh, that really do as I say, I mean a lot to me, and I hope, I hope it'll be something of, uh, that brings joy to you as well. I'm, I'm, you know, of course, mindful that there's a horrible tragedy unfolding in Europe right now with the invasion of the Ukraine, and um, I was, I was just thinking about it and thinking that the, you know, in the Buddhist time, you know, he traveled between these two kingdoms, Kosala and Magana which were on the verge of war the whole time. And maybe he did something to keep the peace, or maybe that was just an accident that it happened. But at the end of his life, war broke out. The, the two sons of the two kings deposed their fathers and went to war against each other. And um, it was a very destructive war. And it, in the telling of, of Stephen Batchelor, most of the followers of the Buddha left him at this time, some just fleeing the violence, others explicitly because he did not, he was unable to, to stop the war and that he seemed so passive and that he didn't, you know, they'd been used to thinking of him as someone with extraordinary powers, but they were no good in stopping this war. And uh, just thinking about the situation in our world today, that is, you know, it's, it's part of human history. This has been going on for a long time. Uh, and I'm aware that, you know, the, the benefits of living in the city where I live uh, also contain expropriation, The, the fact that millions of people were robbed of their land, robbed of their freedom, robbed of the, of the fruits of their labor and held in slavery. Uh, and that those have accumulated in our society as well. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, even in the best of times, there's a lot of pain that is forgotten about and that is uh, brushed aside. Um, I'm, I have a, a line from uh, Joan Sutherland's book uh, about the Vimala Kirti Sutta. She quotes Manjushri as asking Vimala Kirti, what is joy? And Vimala Kirti replies, if there is benefit, rejoice without regret. So even though I know that there are tragic things unfolding in this world, I'm going to turn to joy, joy in my life, and joy that I hope I can share with you. So I'm going to see if I can get this to work. I'm going to start up my slideshow. And so can you spotlight or can you, let's see, I should, I should be able to then uh, share a screen. Is that right, Maria? Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. 
Yeah, we, we can all see that. So I want to I want to just share some things that have been significant for me over over the many years that I've had the pleasure of coming to the Zendo. Here is a, a scene somewhere around quarter of six in the morning, one winter morning, when uh, I was walking down the street, and I think I was with Ann Lipscomb, um, walking from a, a parking lot a, a couple blocks away, and there were two small screech owls sitting in a tree near the, uh, about a block away from the, the Zendo. So I, I hope you can make them out against the gray background. A uh, very beautiful sight that uh, I think of often. Here's the Zendo lit up by the sodium vapor lights that, that line the street. Um, and another view in the daytime, a much more recent photograph with um, a bare tree that the, the tree that is behind the, uh, the roof line uh, grows up actually through the deck that um, or, or right next to the deck, but will soon take over the entire deck, which is where you enter to come in through the kitchen of the house that is, has, has been serving as the Zendo. Uh, and it's a very, very major tree with a trunk about as, about as big around as uh, I can reach. And um, it's called a catalpa tree. And they're not common in this part of Texas, but this is a, a, a rare and very beautiful one. Uh, under the catalpa tree, there are uh, Peg and others have cared for the beautiful gardens that are here, including some Japanese maples. And there are some lovely statues. Uh, and among the people who've cared for the gardens here over the years, here's Lori enjoying uh, some plantings a couple years ago. And, and Lipscomb with me in a selfie uh, after putting in some pansies. Uh, I think that this is Peter Williams's arms. Uh, he had pulled out this rusted grate from behind the uh, chimney that um, is behind the altar at, at Appamana. And um, it's just an example of how everything at Appamana has been held together through the efforts of the community. So I'm going to show, you know, I'm going to show some pictures of some people, but there'll be dozens of people whom I don't include just because they didn't make it into my photographs. But I, what, what I want to share is just that, that there's a lot of effort that goes into maintaining the facility and making it beautiful and making it meaningful uh, in its uh, grounds and so on. Uh, and that matters to me, and I hope that it gives you joy to know about it. Here's that catalpa tree last spring when it was in bloom. Uh, it has very large leaves, bigger than your hand, and, uh, and then these profuse white blooms. Here's a um, Jizo statue uh, as part of the walkway into the Zendo. Here's Peg, of course, the guiding spirit of all the aesthetic uh, benefits of the of the Zendo uh, with a statue that she purchased uh, that was put up outside the back house um, where she lived the last year uh, that she was here on site here before moving to Chicago. Um, those are Ann Lipscomb's toes. Uh, and we stopped to admire the way that uh, mud dried up and, and made these amazing cracks in the, in the gutter along the street. Uh, and here's um, one day during a gardening cleanup day, I stopped and photographed some passion flower fruits, uh, which I really love. And um, I cut, uh, that's, a, that's another one with Ann Lipscomb in it, although I edited the picture so that her fingertip is not in it anymore. Here is a, a leaf and some of the blossoms from the catalpa tree. And here is Kim, uh, one of the most um, dedicated and generous workers at Appamata, uh, cleaning up some of that stuff that I had stopped to admire uh, in the street before. Um, 
the sludge that forms in the gutters outside. Uh, that's uh, David Burks and Matt. I'm blanking on Matt's last name and, and uh, Christoph uh, raking many millions of uh, pecan leaves and, and catawba leaves in the front yard. Uh, here's a fly on the sign in the early, early morning before the sun was up that just caught my attention, a red-eyed fly. Here are Lori and Nilda uh, in the Zendo uh, not too long ago. Uh, they've been cleaning windows inside the Zendo for the morning. Um, and uh, this is really what I started with, uh, what I wanted to share that, you know, I get to be in here a lot and I get to see the altar and I wanted to just go through and, and just show a little bit more detail on some of the things on the altar. You can see that the altar is against a uh, fireplace. It's blocking the fireplace um, uh, opening and then above it, there's a mantle. On the mantle, you can see from right to left, there's a little, a little cup where um, spent matches are, are placed after lighting the, the candles. There's a candle snuffer, there's a little tray for incense and a box for holding matches. There's the beautiful calligraphy, uh, which is above the altar, centered above the altar, and, and something that drives me nuts every time I look at it, slightly off center with the uh, beat up old um, plug fixture in the wall that's, that's just below it. To the next, um, uh, to the left of that, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be so sensitive, uh, except that, you know, Peg has arranged, and, and Peg and with others working on it, has arranged so many things so symmetrically and so beautifully here that any uh, asymmetry is, is jarring. Uh, to the left of the calligraphy, there's a statue of Bodhidharma. Uh, he's floating across a giant river, a raging river on a, on a thin reed. And to the left of the picture of Bodhidharma, there's a small ceramic frog. I have a little bit more to say about that later. And then to the left of the frog, there's a rack in which there are held cards memorializing the names of people who have, who have passed away, who are, have special significance for members of the Sangha. Hey Joel, and just asking what the calligraphy means. It, it is, uh, you know, I'm, I was going to give an answer and it's, it's on the, it's what shows in the, uh, the background. Does anybody can raise their hand and, and Maria can recognize you if you actually know. Laurie, I see you. There you go. What, what did you say, Laurie? Amada. It means Afamata? Is it mindful care or something? Apamada some mindful. Kind of, something like mindful care. Yeah, there's a, I can see at the at the bottom of the main section, there's Shin, the heart mind character. And then and that seems to have a, like a house-like structure above it. But I'm not actually I, I know that on the opposite wall there's something which is which is uh, apamata and, and uh, ordinary. ordinary mind. So this may be related to that as well. So on the altar, there are uh, some flowers on the left. Uh, there's a big rock in the middle. Uh, I'm reminded that it was not until uh, after the Greeks invaded part of India and were stranded in Afghanistan uh, after the death of Alexander the Great that um, representational statuary became common uh, in, uh, in Buddhist societies. And that before that, the representations of the Buddha were rocks or uh, shells or other kind of non-figurative uh, representations like that. This is a rock that I know that Flint brought back from a trip to Switzerland. So it's a chunk of the Alps uh, and it's white 
limestone that once was part of the seabed under the Mediterranean that got pushed up many hundreds of millions of years ago uh, and uh, formed part of the Alps. Uh, in front of that, there are three iron receptacles. The round one uh, has ashes in it, and that's where we put the, the sticks of incense. The square one on the left uh, is where we used to put incense for the Sunday service. Uh, I'm sorry, put uh, burning charcoal for the Sunday service. And the one on the right, the square box on the right, contains chip incense, which we would, in the zendo we would sprinkle onto the onto that burning charcoal. Now we have a placeholder for it uh, and uh, typically do not burn charcoal anymore. Another view from the top down. Um, let's see. The three uh, figurative statues on the on the altar on the left uh, in the left picture is Samanta Bhadra, uh, the Bodhisattva of strength and persistence. Uh, next to him, uh, you can recognize the, the figure by the sword, that's Manjushri with the Sword of Wisdom. And then on the right, in the, next, in the other picture, behind the receptacle that, that holds water, uh, that would be uh, Avalokiteshvara, uh, which you can tell by the many arms uh, and the other symbols that are there. Here's a close-up of that statue of Bodhidharma famous for his uh, staring eyes and beetling eyebrows. And um, here's some, uh, a, a stick of incense that is burned down in the ashes. And kind of the arrangement to the, to the left uh, as I'm facing of the altar. It's more statues and, and some of the beautiful flowers from the flowers committee led by Laurie. Here's some old matches. Here's one of the, here's actually one of the drawers in that cabinet that is the altar open. It contains candles and, and other supplies that are used on the altar. Here's that frog. And uh, I believe this is from Mexico or, or Central America. You can see it's a frog that is covered with other images. Uh, fish and lizards and lightning and ladybugs and geometrical patterns. So it itself is a kind of universal frog. And uh, in a uh, uh, reading that I had with Council 3 last week, um, I think it was uh, Kim who brought up that the, the uh, Japanese poet, artist, Rinzai priest Sengai, uh, drew this famous frog and um, he wrote a verse which uh, says if by practicing zazen one becomes a buddha that is to say if by sitting very still one becomes a buddha how about frogs and uh, suzuki roshi gave a very famous talk about this subject this is the, at the far end of the room uh, that you can just barely make out uh, in the camera uh, with the beautiful morning light streaming into it. And I have a few pictures of, of the Zendo with, with some people in it besides uh, the, the empty space that we're, we've gotten used to. This is during the uh, head student closing ceremony for Kim a few months ago. Here's Joan, who was the, the timekeeper for that event, uh, asking or getting set to ask a question. And this one, oh my gosh, I didn't position it right. But uh, if you could see it, you would see that that's Flint leading uh, an inquiry session uh, some, some years ago. Here's Peg in the kitchen at the Zendo demonstrating how to hit the clackers to start the, a, a meditation sitting. And here's another view of the Zendo. This was a, a couple years ago. It was the ceremony for the inauguration of Council 4, uh, a, a lovely day and a, and a, a very joyous occasion uh, back in 2018 or 19. Here's a, here's a party 
uh, it was Peg's birthday in 2015. And then we had a lunch in her honor. Some of the beautiful flowers on the altar. Uh, Peg in the back house doing what she does, uh, which is to think of amazingly complex structures of things to share with other people. And that's the end of the slideshow. So, as I say, I feel very, very privileged that I get to be in the Zendo as much. And I wanted to share just some images that matter to me. Oh, I'm sorry, one last image. I, I may, I've talked to some people about this, but the one that is behind me right now is from, I took a couple of weeks ago. Again, this is um, some oak leaves off the ground and some leftovers from, I believe, uh, flowers that had been on the altar that got swept up and put into a trash can out on the deck resulting in this exquisite image. It looks like a Milky Way, a view of the Milky Way or something to me. Um, so anyway, I love that. Uh, I, have, I have nothing more profound than that to offer. <laughs> and I'm very conscious of the fact that here I am talking to people, many of whom have a much greater depth of commitment and, and experience in Sazen and, and in meditation than I do. So I hope this was enjoyable in some way for you. If I can answer any questions, please let me know. I see Laurie. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, Joe. Um, I just want to thank you so much for that. It was so lovely to see that and see the history and see people's faces there. It's just really nice. I mean, some of us have been going in there by ourselves mostly, and it's just a wonderful reminder of when we were all there together, working together. So thank you so much for that. It was a wonderful tour. I appreciate it. And, and the one over the altar is Appamata, and across the way is Ordinary Mind is the way. Thank you. On the opposite wall. Okay. I, I didn't want to hazard a guess about that. So thank you for, for making that clear. Yeah. Uh, Maria? Here I am. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to thank you for that because, you know, I'm, I'm far away and there's often many thoughts I have like, oh, I wonder what the view is in the draw, you know, when you open the draw and it's just those things to actually just get really intimate with the altar and, and with the draws and it was just such a beautiful thing, you know, and to see all the different corners of the Zendo and and the the, the chairs and, and just all the little things the back room and you know the people in the zendo you know when when they're in there and and the surroundings of the zendo you know and people are cleaning up <laughs> and things that are taken care of and just to get so close and intimate with the zendo that i've been looking at for over two years or so now it, it was just so beautiful and such a gift to me and you've no idea how many times when people open that drawer, I think, I wonder what they're looking at. I wonder <laughs> what their their view is. You know, it's 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 incredible the detail that you've thought about and that you you've offered. And you know, that I've often thought, I just want to get a little bit closer. If only I could just get right up to that and right up to that on the altar. So it was so beautiful for me. Thank you so much. I I I've just loved every minute of this slideshow it's just i'm gonna I'm, a, I'm gonna actually put up a slideshow that has all the closets and what's in the closets because <laughs> they're, you know they're important it is it's just this so thing. amazing yeah. yeah to just see all in the there places and and the you know what's behind the stove in the kitchen and and, and where joko Beck's pictures are and and the pictures of Suzuki Roshi and how the cushions are stored. Everything tended with such wonderful care. Mm, yeah, and to actually experience the view that people in the Zendo experience, 
you know, to see your view and to feel your experience in and to, to, to share that. That's it's just been wonderful. Thank you so much. And I thought that image behind you was the earth when you first put it up. I thought it was an image of the world. Yeah. It, it looks like continents or something, but it's a couple of oak leaves. Yeah. Yeah, incredible. And I'll let Anne go next. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. I see Anne has her hand up. Should be unmuted now. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this was so much fun and so evocative and so really for me brought to mind the embodiment of our practice and how our eyes are part of that, are, are a, a sense organ and how important they are in our practice and, and how important they are in creating connection, creating that and um, just such a meditation on our sight and how it connects to our, uh, our memory and our, our relations. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. I love your trash can. I think <laughs> that's the best. I just love it. So thank you very much for all of this. Thank you. We have Bridget next. Now I'm Hi, Bridget. Well, Bridget, before you speak, let me say, I had several pictures of you that I cut, but you've done so much work at Appamata. And I, you know, on various occasions, I've taken pictures of you with clippers in your hands or trying to fix the, the fence that divides us from the neighbors on the, on the west side, etc. Uh -huh. So I, I wish I'd included those now. Well, that's, as you said, there are many people who've worked there, and but it's been a joy to see these things, and I especially enjoyed your explanation because I've never known the explanation of the three carved figures right on the main altar. So it was um, the the first one was um, who? That? Samantha Badra. Samantha Badra, and then usually usually shown sitting on an elephant. Okay. So I, 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 in fact, I'm guessing it's Samantha Bhadra because I can't see any of his normal iconography there. Okay, right. It's just a guy sitting on a lotus. Well, <laughs> anyway, it yeah. brought back some wonderful memories of our activities together and and work, and I just want to express my deep gratitude. I'm probably going to send you a quick text at the end of the service that I, but um, I just want to express this to you and everyone who's. Uh, it just does create a more embodied experience in our activities together. Thank you. With a deep bow. Thank you. And, you know, I, I wanted to share the physical environment, but we share the, the Sangha together, wherever we are. So that's um, for the people who are not here, who can't be here. I hope you don't feel excluded from this. I wanted to, I, I wanted to bring this up so that I could share it with you what I've been able to enjoy. Becky, hello, welcome. Hey Joel, uh, thank you for all of it. And one of the things I really would like to say my appreciation for is the amazing images you have that others would see as debris and you recognize them as beauty and art. Hmm. And, and I just, I really like that a lot when we are able to do that. Um, and, uh, and I think that this, I was thinking about it, it's, it's probably been a nice journey for you as part of your moving on um, to, to be able to offer this. And I'm glad that it was so mutually valuable to us. So. Thank you. you. You said what I was trying to express. Thank you so much. We have Nelda next. Hi, Nelda. Still muted. 
Oh, oh, there, I think. There you go. Good morning, Joel. Oh, and thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I, um, you captured Apamata, and it, it may look like things that you captured, but I've told this many, many times before. When I first heard about Apamata and, and decided to attend my very first time, the minute I stepped onto the property, I got this almost take your breath away feeling. And without ever having read anything about Buddhism, practiced anything about Buddhism, I said to myself, I'm home. And it's because all of those little things you talk about, the grounds, and they're not little things, the grounds, the flower, the energy, the heart, the practice that people at Apamata have put into every little detail has imbued every part of it with that spirit and that energy. I feel it. I, I know it. And you showed us so many details this morning um, of the place and location and placement and thought. I mean, just the flower arrangements. I've watched the care that's put into one flower arrangement. There are a hundred times a hundred times a hundred things on the Apamata property that have that same heart care and spirit. Mm -hmm. um, it's been um, so joyful to, to listen to you and go, ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. I've seen that. I've known that. I've felt that. I hope. My true wish for everyone is is to um, not to minimize what you did this morning at all because you brought it so close to home. But my hope is that everyone can at some point see all of that, and especially that trash can, because I walk by that trash can two, three, four times a day, not a day a week, to go pick up my mail to make sure there's something not delivered on the front porch, to pull a few weeds. I will have such reverence for that trash can from now on because of, of that photo. So thank you so much. Thank you, Joel. Yeah. Claudine, welcome. Okay, well, Maria said a lot that I would say as well, being in Switzerland. And I want to thank you so much because, you know, Zoom is not really embodied. Yeah? It's a screen. But each time when I see the Zendo, I feel I'm there almost. And now with your voice, your comments, your eye on each picture, and your heart, on each picture. I, I felt I was really there. So thank you so much for this great gift. And it is, as Nelda said, it's far more than things. Thank you. Rosemary, welcome. Oh, hi, Joel, and thank you um, for chronicling what you saw. It's kind of a teaching um, to, to do that. And for me, um, seeing all of the corners and, and the altar in, in such detail. Um, but I think for me, more than that was all the pictures you took of the people and that showed um, this um, mindful energetic care that it takes to support and maintain a place like the Zendo and the, the uh, community. Um, so I appreciated your taking all the photos that you did, but what hit me the most in my heart, I think was all the people. And, and, and it showed if there was one person in the picture, you knew that they were with others. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have to second, third, fourth my appreciation for your background picture because 
that is it's exquisite so you have an eye and and thank you for sharing your view of a treasure that someone else would see as trash so thank you thank you so much well again many many thanks for this generous response and and thanks for all the people who are here today, who are giving their energy to Apamata, that is that is building this community based on this physical location that uh, has been important and will continue to be important, but is is itself not the Sangha. The Sangha is what we are making and will continue to make in the future. So thank you for, for sharing that joy with me. And um, let's turn to our closing ceremony.